Greetings and welcome to Rise of Industry. I'm Catherine of Sky and I have been playing this game in very, very early access since pretty much the beginning. Uh, I think it was just a demo when I played it the very first time. Anyway, I have called my series a sort of first impressions first look because it has undergone so many changes since I played it last time. I'm actually going to play the tutorial for you because there are many, many things that have been added. Many things have been changed and I've been excited to read the devs, uh, dev logs about what has been going on. So let's go ahead and start with a tutorial and figure out how to play this new and improved Rise of Industry. First of all, I'd like to thank the devs for giving me a key to play this game. It has been really a fun journey um, since the very beginning. And uh, the game is releasing out of Steam Early Access tomorrow. So um, it's going to be kind of exciting. All right, let's see what we can do here. Welcome to Rise of Industry, a game about testing your entrepreneurial skills. Here are some instructions to give you a head start. First of all, can I change the options? Hello? Aha, settings. I want to um, change the UI scale. Oh, yay. Let's go to 150%. I'm playing on uh, 1440p, so hopefully this is going to be a little bit more readable. But there are a billion different options that you can change here, which is very nice. Uh, all the things and all the stuffs. There we go. And let's resume. Okay. All right. It's. I think it's a little bit bigger. There we go. There are 53 steps in the tutorial, but hopefully they're all short. Okay, so to start off, let's learn around how to move around. Let's go WASD to pan, WASD plus shift. Okay, for faster, right mouse button, Q and E. Okay, great. Scroll wheel to page to zoom. Great. All right, open Chapwick Town Center. Oh, okay, so to build in a region you don't control, you need a permit. It's not as easy as just buying it as there's a free market. You can start an auction and bid enough to gain control of it. All right, so this is Chapwick Town Center. Uh, we need to click the region tab. There we go. Let's start an auction and keep building, bidding until your competitors give up, allowing you to earn ownership of that region. Be careful to run out of money. Wow, okay. Be careful to run out of money. All right, we shall do it. Bid on the auction. Okay, plus 20%. Currently bidding 100 million. Okay, adding more, 125 million. Okay, looks like we won it. All right, close Chapwick Town Center panel. There we go. Once we start an auction, other companies will be able to bid, bid on the permit. If you place your headquarters, it automatically gives you the region's permit at no cost. If you scan the map a little, you can find other companies on the map. They have the same abilities as we do and are trying the same thing you're doing, so be careful. Okay, so that means we're actually going to have uh, real AI competitors. I can right mouse button to move around as well. Very nice. Okay, I don't see any other companies, but they're probably there hiding in the trees or the shadows or something. <laughs> All right. Next, now let us start building our first production line. First, we need a water siphon to collect the raw resource, water. So let's open the gatherer tab that's here. Uh, there we are. A water siphon, like other gatherers, collects raw resources to be used in farms and factories to generate their products. Press R to rotate the building. All right, so here's our water siphon. Oh, it zooms us all the way over here. Okay, if you notice, it is opposite here. So we're going to press R to move it around. There we go. And it's green underneath. Yay. Whoa, lots of lots of fluffy fluff. I mean, uh, smoke as we or dust. It's not smoke. It's dust. Okay. After placing the water siphon, it will need a few harvesters placed. A harvester collects a raw resource and brings it back to the gatherer. You may need to rotate the harvester to place it. Yeah, road on this side would be good. Excellent. Another one. Now we need to place roads to get the water to the water siphon. Roads are the only way trucks move across the map. If a road is not connected, it will have a roadblock at the end. Oh, that's good. That's really a nice uh, feature, I think. Okay, so we need to build here. Oh, I was going to build this way thing. All right, fine. Fine, fine. Oh, oh, this is great. Look at this. This is the roadblock. It shows you that it's not connected. I like that. That's a really nice quality of life feature. Because sometimes it used to be kind of hard to tell if roads were connected or not. But this is nice. Okay, and connect here. Yay. Yay. The water siphon is running. Raw resources like water and sand can be collected in infinitely as long as you keep paying the upkeep. Yeah, so these guys have an upkeep, which we can probably see later. I can't click on them right now. 
Some other resources like coal, copper, gas, and iron and oil have a limited amount of units available for collecting. We will have to be careful how we use them. Okay. All right. Gatherers for these raw resources need to be placed near their corresponding resources, but do not need roads to connect their harvesters and hubs to function. Really? That's new. Okay. We'll put the coal uh, mining thingy here. Okay, place three coal mine harvesters. Oh, you place it directly on top now. Oh, that's new. Okay. That's interesting. Well then. Okay, we can close the thing. Oh, building efficiency. You can change building efficiency now? Oh, hello. All right, lumberyard harvesters have an area of effect where it will select up to four trees closest to them for their exclusive use. For each tree reserved, it will increase its production rate by 25%. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, all right, so let's click, go to the lumberyard. Click. Yes, there we go. Okay, and we'll place it here where it tells us to. Thank you. Okay, so place three lumber harvesters. Oh, does this need to also have a... These must need a road. Okay. One. Oh, one here. Two. And three. That's interesting. That's interesting. I wonder if it actually shows which trees it picks. Okay, so we're going to close this. I kind of didn't get that bit, like which trees does it pick and all that kind of stuff. Okay, trees and fish will deplete, but they are renewable. Fish will respawn over time and we can plant trees and wait for them to grow. Ooh, that's new. Terraforming panel. Plant trees. Two and a half thousand. Wow. Okay. Place ten trees near the lumberyard. Okay, let's place them kind of nearby. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, apparently that's ten. Right. Close the terraforming menu. All right, we will do that. The warehouse acts as a hub for small areas on the map. Once placed, it will coordinate the collection and distribution of products amongst the buildings within its radius. So let's open the logistics thingy. Click on the warehouse. Okay. I'm going to place a warehouse in the highlighted area. Great. Not that this is actually a useful spot, <laughs> but it'll be fine. Let's see. There we go. And it's green. Oh, it has an in and an out. That's new. Well then. I like this. This reminds me very much of like, I had I had some Hot Wheels cars uh, when I had Legos too. I had a car wash in my Legos and they had like little signs to go. In. Oh, anyway, I don't know. Just for some reason reminded me. It must be the low poly. Beautiful, beautiful graphics here. Anyway, there we go. Select the dirt road. Okay, well, when a building generates a product, it will send that product to the warehouse. The water siphon, for example, will send water to the warehouses to be stored. Okay, let's go ahead and connect this. Now these harvesters, of course, are going to go to the water uh, siphon. Uh, all right, so we did this. Oh, and we need to circle back, apparently. Oh, okay, so that's how this is going to work. That's fine. Okay, once stored, the water is transported to where it's needed. Like a crop farm, which uses water to generate farm produce that can be sold or used for other recipes. Open the tech tree. All right, that's up here. At the beginning of the game, we get three free unlocks. After that, we have to spend money and time to research and unlock. After we select some unlocks, then it's, let's place the crop farm. Okay, so we'll do unlock wheat, vegetables, and flour. Okay. Vegetables, and there's the flour. Okay. We can place, make food at the, uh, make flour at a food factory. We can plant veggies. Okay, great. So then open the basic distribution tree and select truck depot. Okay. Can build truck depots. I wonder what I wonder what if they have a different functionality now. Okay, logistics and administration. Select one way wow, one way roads. Interesting. Um, and then air purifiers. Okay. Ah, this must relate to the pollution expansion uh, or the pollution update thing. All right, let's close the tech tree. Now that we're researching truck depots, the research progress bar appears in the upper left-hand corner. Oh, okay, I didn't finish reading that. Go back. 
Uh, it usually takes a bunch of time, but for the sake of learning, let's speed that up. Okay, so we waited for that to finish. Now that we selected some unlocks, let's place the crop farm. Open the farms tab in the construction bar. There's our crops farm. Okay, great. Aha, place three fields in the designated areas. I like the little bell sound. That's quite sweet. Uh, okay, let's see. We'll close this. Oh, did I miss something? Ah, yes. The crop farms, like all farms, are like gatherers, except they use fields instead of harvesters, which don't need roads to operate. All they require um, uh, is water or wheat to generate goods. Next. Once we place a road between the warehouses and the crop farm, the warehouse will begin sending water to the crop farm automatically. I wonder how the roads, or how the, uh, the truck system works now. Okay, our crop farm is ready to produce something. If we check the farmer's market, we'll see that vegetables have a higher value than wheat. So let's set our crop farm's production to vegetables. So if we look at the farmer's market, here's these. They are sold at 22.8k, and these are 22.6k. No, they're not. <laughs> No. Oh, no. Average price, 9.69. And this is 9.8k. Hmm. Hmm. Game, you're trolling your tutorial. Okay, so we need to set this to veggies. Okay, and then we can close both. Okay, open. Okay, congratulations. We now have a working vegetable production line. So let's start making some money by selling our vegetables. All right, can, I can't click on this. I wish I could see, like, how many trucks we have, because I know that was a huge part of the games before, but maybe not anymore. Okay, we can uh, place road connecting uh, the warehouse to Chapwick. All right, so this one goes here. All right, connect it there. That's a little interesting way to connect this. Products can also be moved between other warehouses using the logistics system. We can place one warehouse and one depot of each type in a region even if we don't own the build permit. Wow, okay. So let's place a warehouse near Newton Farmer's Market, okay? Or Newton's, I think. Let's click this. Oh, it zooms us automatically. This is very handy. Uh, okay, shove it down. There we go. Place a truck depot near Newton and Chapwick warehouses. All right. There's a truck depot. Okay. Rotate it around. Plop it down. And I think again, I hope it'll zoom us. Yes, it will. There we go. And we'll shove it down here. Okay. Now we're going to open the Newton warehouse. Once depots of the same type are placed near each relative warehouses, we can make requests between warehouses. Let's make a request. All right, so we want to select vegetables, farm produce, and we'll select, but I love the icons. I love them. They're so cute. Select amount to 10 units. Okay. 10. There we go. If there are multiple trade depot types within range of a warehouse, we can limit which vehicle will move the good. We can also adjust our current requests using the logistics routes panel. Okay. I have to read that again. Multiple trade depot types. Ah, okay. So if you have a train station here, you can choose whether you want it via truck or train, I think. Okay, so we need to close this. Open the logistic routes panel. There we go. Select farm produce and then vegetables. This is interesting. This is very interesting. We can select any product category and see our requests. Dragging a request higher than the other requests will adjust when that request is fulfilled compared to the others. So basically a prioritization. That's really good. Okay, store up to 10. Okay, so they want 10. That makes sense. Uh, and then I guess they'll automatically sell. Is that how it works? I guess we'll find out. When we send product to a shop within the settlement or the state, the product will be sold for money. This funding can now be used to expand our product lines and research new tech. So open the Chapwick warehouse. Okay. Destinations. Okay, I remember this part. So... Veggies, choose a destination. We're going to go to, yes, commercial, farmer's market. Yay. Note, whenever assigning a destination, we will only see buildings that will accept the chosen product with the destination at the top of the list being the closest choice. Yeah, I like that. That's a really good feature of the game. 
After assigning a destination, we can choose the maximum amount stored. We can leave the value at infinite, which will keep sending the product to the destination until its storage is full. Okay, so here's the, the infinite max amount stored at destination. And then, okay, there we go, next. We can also set a specific amount at the destination to be stored, allowing us to fine tune our production lines. Okay, so use the plus button to change the amount stored to five. Hmm, I wonder how that affects, look, I'm, I'm clicking it thing, hello. Okay, I clicked the wrong button. It was this one, the max amount stored to five. Okay, so let's close the warehouse building panel. We can use the same method of micromanaging destinations to any building, but we also forgo using uh, the warehouse to automatically distrib distribute products. Okay, so we can micromanage or we can use the warehouses. Eventually, we will want to start processing higher tier products to generate higher profits. Factories are buildings that allow that follow a selected recipe to generate a product similar to farms. Let's open the factory construction bar. Their products can be sold to the state and to settlements, depending on the shops they build. Uh, they built, but be warned, they have higher upkeep and will produce pollution. So we can place a food factory here. Let's rotate this to the way it wants to go. There we go. Place a road between the warehouse and the factory. There we go. Pollution is a poisonous effect that harms land and water tiles. If left unchecked, pollution will slow the production of water and farms and cause settlements to shrink and die. Oh, that sounds bad. So open pollution management construction bar. There we go. Didn't we get something like that? The air purifier? Yeah. Pollution is represented as a graying of the map. We can use trees to stand the tide a little, uh, but the more efficient way to remove pollution is to use a cleaner building. All right. Place an air purifier near the food factory. I wonder if these need any products to operate. Another aspect of rise of industry we should cover is traffic. As we add more buildings to your production lines, there will be more trucks on the roads, which will cause delays. Okay. To alleviate this problem, we can use the logistics system and utilize different vehicles, or we can micromanage our street network using one-way roads. Ah, uh, there we go. Uh, One-way roads are like urban roads, except both lanes go in the same direction. The direction is determined by the direction we drag and drop the one-way road into place. Okay, so if we start here, then it will go this way. Yay, oops, I should go over those tiles. Okay, there we go. Air purifier to the warehouse. There we go. Oh, do we really need this many things? Okay, sure. There are also land bridges to pass over roads. Oh, that's cool. If managed right, we can prevent traffic coming to a screeching halt, preventing our products from getting delivered uh, on time. Uh, if traffic does become a problem, we can use map layers to see where our trucks are getting jammed and then alter the traffic patterns to fix the problems. Let's open map layers, that's up here. Click show traffic heat map. Oh, our veggies are... I love the veggie. <laughs> Look at this gigantic carrots and lettuces. <laughs> so good. Okay, show traffic heat map. Oh, there's this this spot here that's kind of rough. Uh, map players also give you access to a variety of different information about the map. If You, you can also see these paved roads are faster. That's kind of cool. Uh, if you need more specific data about the map, we can use the query tool. Okay, we can close the map layers. Select Query Tool, which is the info little thing imaging -y. The Query Tool is used to... Whoa, look at this. Wow. Uh, used to tell you the detailed information about the tile your cursor is over. It will tell you the tile type, pollution rating, building type, and much more. Okay, so this is a road from my corporation. Speed, 50%. What is this one? 50, 100%. So this is quite slow. 75% traffic there. This one has... 86% traffic. This looks so tiny, this little thingy box here. Uh, but yeah, this is a cool tool, I have to say. That's really neat. That's very new. Okay, close the query tool. Bye-bye. Nope. Bye-bye. Nope. Come on. Oh, have to go here. Okay. 
There are some other tools we have at our disposal. If we hit the tab key, a series of labels will appear displaying the name of settlements, shops, resources, and the name of our buildings. Okay, so I'm pressing tab to kind of cycle through these. There we are, cycling. Uh, probably we want to have this, uh, I don't know. There are many things that we want. Maybe like this, I like the stores. Pressing the Alt button will cause production bubbles to appear above each of our buildings that show the production progress of each building. It will fill up when the green with green when working right. So let's Alt. Oh, I like this. Oops, they need uh, some flour here. Or they're making flour, but they don't have any deliveries yet. Uh, veggies here. Okay, that's great. Press the Alt button again to make the bubbles disappear. Uh, congratulations, you have completed the tutorial and know the absolute basics. Go start a new game. Maybe start slow with the newcomer difficulty and get rich. All right, that's pretty great. So this has been very informative. So many things have changed. Um, so what I'm going to do is thank you very much for joining me for the tutorial and we will start a new game. So take care of yourselves and each other and I'll see you next time.